How's it going, you fiddlers? It's me fucking Nick Daniels. We're coming at you live yet again, and we're doing today actually a movie review. Haven't done one of these in a little while. Um, dude, the Joker. Okay. Fucking Joker. Oh, hold on. The gawkers are out. Yeah, they're just they're literally just guys sitting there staring. I can't even tell if it's a male or female at this point. Just staring me down. Um, yeah, dude, it was fucking sick, man. Uh, honestly, though, like, that is, like, I mean, I'm not gonna lie, man, like, a lot of the movies I've seen DC, in the DC universe and whatever, um, I'm not gonna lie, I think some of them are kind of rubbish, um, you know, like, Batman vs. Superman, they have good moments, but they're not, like, 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 wow, this is a great film, but I'm telling you, man, last night, The Joker, like, holy fuck, man, that was good, it was, like, and I, I really hate to say it, but, like, I watched a review last night, and, like, it's, like, a 50% of the likes are dislikes, because it, it's just everybody was hating their opinion, and they were just shitting on it, basically, saying, like, well, we kind of expected this, so we don't, you know, we're not really crazy about it, you know, I didn't even go into that, I go into it knowing, knowing it was a Joker film, and it looked kind of like an idea of how he kind of became the Joker, which I'm actually not that certain on, I'm not a big DC kind of guy, and I'll tell you, I was pleasantly surprised uh, at how well that was executed. The, like, the soundtrack was, like, dude, every time, like, there's going to be spoilers, okay? I'm just saying it now. Like, I will randomly talk about something that happened here, probably any second, right? Not scripted. Yeah, so anyway, like I said, the soundtrack, man. The soundtrack comes in every time that uh, he had, like, a, like, there was something menacing coming. And I really liked it because, like, I'm honestly gonna have to watch it a second time. I'm gonna have to. Because I feel like the movie had a lot of scenes that, you know, the cinematography, it, it, would, it would mean more. But where I watched it, I watched it in this IMAX, which is my first time in, basically, in my life that I've done the IMAX experience and the screen was like so fucking big I couldn't even like focus on the screen I had to try to like dart my eyes around so I had to either sit really far back which we didn't we sat in the middle uh, needless to say it was a good friggin time um, but yeah that uh, that did kind of affect it a little bit just a little bit but no man like I said the music came in every time there was like some menacing thought or like like the transition was coming that fucking music played and I was like oh Shit, man. I, I loved it. I loved every second when that music would play because you knew something was going down. Now, like, the actual transition, though, uh, from, like, basically, like, a regular bloke to, like, actually kicking somebody's ass, like, quite literally with a handgun and being like, good night, um, was really good because I like that he starts doing it where he kills the three guys on the bus. Right? He killed, yeah, he kills the three guys in those. He didn't even look like he really meant to, to be honest. But he killed them. He killed the guys on the bus. Obviously, he hadn't thought that one out. He didn't, like, he didn't plan it. Um, that, that's a kind of, like, that's a big thing, I think, in, in the story. Was, like, he didn't go into it, like, preemptively, right? He didn't go about it, and he was, like, thinking about it. And he's like, man, like, I'm really gonna fucking wash these three kids, these three young guys, right, in their blazers and whatever. Um, you know, I'm, I'm gonna, it's, it's still red there, but you can stop moving. Yeah, literally, literally at a red light, he's still moving his car forward. Um, yeah, so like I said, though, it, it's it's just funny because, you know, at the end of the day, um, cut, that's kind of what I took from it. I was like, man, like, you can tell, like, it really traumatized him in those first three kills. And, you know, I don't, I, you know, I don't think he regrets doing it in, in the film. Like, he looks like he's actually pretty fucking okay with it, basically. And then he goes over to that chick's place and he just razzes. Now, I know people were arguing that she wasn't even, like, real. Like, that was just, like, a figment of his imagination. I don't think that was it at all, but we'll talk about that later because, like, I could be completely wrong. Um, but, yeah, like I said, he kills the three guys, man. And the, the scene where he's walking with the pistol and his arm is fully drawn out and he's just got the pistol and, like, the guy's, like, bleeding out on the stairs. Oh, my god man like i was literally on the edge of my seat because i was like holy fuck man like they're doing this so well uh, like that scene alone to me was like it was really showing that he had it in him like he was starting to gain this confidence and i think a lot of the, in, in a lot of the movie when he's seeing like the social security person 
Alright, we got a guy driving behind me like a fucking idiot here. Okay, I can't merge because he's not letting me do that. Oh my god, man. You start driving around here for a while and you start driving to some real morons. Um, but yeah, like I said, so basically, when he, do when he does shoot the guy on the stairs, it's kind of what I like. Like, like I said, it's that transition that he's not going to just get pushed around anymore. Like he's starting to stand up for himself. And when he talks to social worker or whatever, they, they have a couple back and forths during the movie. And he tells her that he's like, you haven't been listening to me this whole fucking time. I'm trying to tell you that I don't feel validated and I'm starting to. Because when he shoots the three people, people start rallying behind that for some reason, right? Because Gotham is in such a shithole, which they do show by the way, quite well. Um, during the movie, like there's a lot of scenes where like, it's not like explicitly said like, this is why they're necessarily following him 24-7. They do say, obviously, um, because they're getting behind him because he's like, he looks like he was taking out someone who's rich. And the underdogs are going with him. They're like, dude, like the poor and, you know, his neighbors and whoever, they don't even know him. But th they're down with that message. They're like, fuck the rich, right? That's what they're kind of going for. But uh, what I was saying is, like, Gotham itself, they have so many shots of where, like, he'll be walking up a step or a couple characters will go by somewhere and it's just like littered with garbage like everywhere and it's like but it's so well shot to show that that the state of Gotham so it makes sense why people would get into this rational way of thinking or this irrational way and do what they're doing right and they get behind them like that um, another, like, I mean I can talk all day man about this but another good scene um, is where the two policemen are in the subway they're looking at, and, and they're in the train the trolley they're looking for them and they uh they, they can't get them they can't find them and there's like a big fight that starts happening because they shoot one of the guys in the bus who's wearing like a joker mask and like there's a big fucking fight and like the police officers are critically injured and he just smiles and dances because he's starting to realize he's got this power he's influencing like mobs right now i heard an argument too about that like not that specifically but uh, that he wasn't like smart in this movie and cunning because that's what the joker character is supposed to be is smart and cunning but i think he was getting better because the medication was like obviously off he was on seven medications um and once those started to die off it started to kind of that's where he started kicking up some plans and you know he was starting to think things out a little bit and you know i think it wasn't necessarily he was going on the talk show at the end to shoot the guy and be done with it he knew the message would get out right because he's got this huge fucking following and he's like yeah like if i do this it's only gonna get it's only gonna get better right uh another great scene was at the very end of the film when he stands up on the vehicle because like he was kind of like knocked out from like a car crash and uh, he stands up and everyone's fucking screaming for him like that like like they're not fucking with him they're screaming for him they want him to be like like he needs to stand up and do his thing and he does he stands up and it's like in fucking glory man like they are freaking out and it just shows the power that he's got uh, of course the ending is now him back and like basically it looks like like the insane asylum to some degree or something like that uh, and again, he's talking to some like psychologist or something and people were like I see I've seen people online have argued that they, Okay, the whole thing wasn't real then because he's talking to her at the end, right? And it was all made up, but he kills her Right, and you only know that because when he runs runs out of the room his footsteps are tracking uh, They're all in red the red footsteps from the blood So it's like yeah, like he totally fucking just deleted her. So no, I'm pretty sure that's still legitimate uh, like 110 percent that's still legitimate yeah i don't know why that guy's in the past <laughs> i don't know if you can see him in the gopro but yeah that that didn't make a whole lot of sense to me from there. thank you um yeah i don't know man i like i said i could go on for hours with this film there was so many things i liked about it like i forget the i forget the character name but he was like the guy who played the midget and uh when he kills his co-worker there stabs him in the neck with the scissors which you knew was coming um yeah, like, I, I realized right then and there, basically, the midget can't get the lock on the door because he's too short. I thought that was fucking hilarious. Uh, I don't know if that was supposed to be comedic or if it was actually supposed to be, like, his twisted sense of humor kicking in. Uh, you know, and just enjoying it. Like, the sheer panic of the midget. Like, the midget, like, the, the guy, like, I, I mean, I hate to keep referring to him as that. But he had, like, no idea what to do. And you could hear him, like, crying in the corner. And he was, like, trying to figure out a way to get out of there. And he was, like, so defeated because he's, like, I can't even get the lock. Right? Like, I'm, I'm 
helpless to this this Arthur, right, to this man, uh, right? And they didn't know that the villainous intent, obviously, was going to be there. But it starts kind of cluing in when the conversation's getting very fucking awkward. Like, they kind of start looking at each other, and they both can tell something's wrong. Uh, like, this is not normal, and maybe we, maybe we did the wrong thing here. Either way, really fucking good. Uh, it's been like 10 minutes, man. I could honestly, I could talk about this for longer. Yeah, I could honestly talk about this much longer, but I think we'll kind of cap her there just to be kind of safe. Uh, yeah, so I don't know. Good fucking film, man. There's so much more I could talk about, but I really liked it. Like the Bruce Wayne tie-in, uh, even at the pearls or the necklace there that, um, you know, they wreck it. And, you know, you get what you fucking deserve. You just shoots them. I was like, man, that's pretty sick. Not going to lie. Really enjoyed it. And, uh... You know, honestly, goddamn, good movie, man. The laughing was great. The acting was great. I mean, 